Good afternoon, everybody. As you all know, I received a letter from the president's personal physician this morning. We released it to you shortly thereafter in the interest of transparency. I have the letter here and I just want to uh, read it through uh, so we can get started before we get started. This morning, as part of our routine screening program for the president, the SARS CoV-2 virus was detected by antigen testing. This result was subsequently confirmed by a PCR test. On questioning, President Biden is currently experiencing mild symptoms, mostly a running nose and fatigue, with an occasional dry cough, which started yesterday evening. Given that he meets USA Food and Drug Administration, FDA, emergency use authority, criteria for Paxovid, I have recommended initiating such treatment. The president is fully vaccinated and twice boosted, so I anticipate that he will respond favorably as most, as most maximally protected patients do. Early use of Paxlovid in this case provides additional protection against severe disease. He will isolate in accordance with CDC recommendations. I will keep your office updated with any changes in his condition or treatment plan. I also wanted to provide you with a brief readout of the president's activities today. The president has been working from the residents, like so many of us have during this pandemic, doing calls with senior staff, including the chief of staff, myself, and Dr. Jha, who's here with us. As, as we read out, the president also called Senator Casey, Representative Cartwright, mayors of Scranton, mayor of Wilkesboro, and Representative Clyburn. The president also called a few of his cousins from Scranton who were set to attend today's event in Pennsylvania. And he spoke with Ambassador Giddenstein and Cornyn. You all have seen the photo he posted on and the video that was just released to all of you out of transparency moments ago. The president will continue to work from the residents. Today, as you all know, as I just mentioned, and as we sent out earlier, Dr. Ashish Jha, our COVID-19 response coordinator, uh, is joining us today in the briefing room. And as I tweeted out earlier, Dr. Jha and I spoke to the president this morning, and he said he's feeling fine. He has a little dry, dry uh, cough, as I just mentioned from the doctor's letter, a little ro ro runny nose. Uh, he's feeling tired, but he's ver working very hard on behalf of the American people. And with that, Dr. Jha. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm pleased to be with you. Um, so uh, as Corinne mentioned, I spoke to the president earlier. I also spoke uh, at length with Dr. O'Connor, who is um, the president's personal physician. And I'm happy to share the readout of these conversations with you, and then I'm happy to take questions. In terms of my conversation with the president, uh, he sounded great. I asked him, you know, Mr. President, how are you feeling? He said, I'm feeling fine. Um, he said he was, he was feeling fine. He had been working all morning. Uh, he hadn't even been able to finish his breakfast because he had just been busy. I encouraged him to finish his breakfast. Um, in terms of uh, my conversation with Dr. O'Connor, we, we talked at length about what happened this morning. Uh, as Corinne mentioned, uh, the president got his uh, regular testing that he does on his, on, on his regular cadence. Uh, after he tested positive, he reported uh, these symptoms that have been described. Dr. O'Connor examined him thoroughly, he found his exam to be normal, to be at his baseline. Um, and, uh, and then obviously he recommended that the president take Paxlovid. Uh, the president accepted that recommendation and has started Paxlovid and has taken his first course already. Um, I want to also just take a minute to sort of mark this moment. You know, because the president is fully vaccinated, double boosted, his risk of serious illness is dramatically lower. He's also getting treated with a very powerful antiviral, and that further reduces his risk of serious illness. And it's a reminder of the reason that we all work so hard to make sure that every American has the same level of protection that the president has. That every American has the same level of immunity 
and why we have worked so hard to make sure that people have access to life-saving treatments like Paxlovid. These are incredibly important things for the president to have. They're incredibly important things for every American to have. And we have worked very hard over the last 18 months to make sure we have plenty of vaccines, that we have plenty of therapies, that people can get tested on a regular basis, as the president does, because testing allows you to identify an infection early and get started with treatment early. And we all know from medicine that early treatment is always better. Um, let me also take a moment to talk about BA5. If you've listened to me at all in the last couple of weeks, uh, you heard me talk a lot about this subvariant of Omicron that is now 70, 80% of all infections in the United States. Um, it's a reminder to everyone, if you are over 50, the way I am, the way many of you might be, if you are over the age of 50 and if you've not gotten a vaccine shot in the year 2022, you need to go get one. You need to go get one now because it will dramatically improve your protect level of protection, reduce your risk of having serious illness. It's the best thing that people can be doing. Let me just finish by saying, obviously we work hard to protect the president, make sure he's, a, and he's been vaccinated and boosted, has access to treatments. We also have been working very, very hard to make sure every American has access to the same things. Because every American deserves access to the best vaccines, the best, best treatments, and they are widely available. And I want to use this moment to remind everybody of that and to remind everybody to avail themselves of that. Get vaccinated. If you have a breakthrough infection, get treated. It's the best thing you can do to protect yourself. Let me stop and take questions, and I know you will as well. Yeah. We'll both take questions, but uh, go ahead, Nancy. Thank you so much, Dr. John. Has uh, the president been, been tested to determine which variant he has? Is it BA5? And if so, what does that say about his prognosis? It's a great question. Um, the virus has been sent off for sequencing. It takes usually about a week for that sequencing to come back. That's under normal circumstances. He's the president. The sequencing will get prioritized. So we should have an answer sooner than that. But you can't just tell from a regular test what kind of variant. So the sequencing results will be back at some point less than a week from now. And has the president had to halt any of his regular medications now that he's taking Paxlovid? And what are you doing to mitigate the risk from halting those medications? Yeah, so this is a, I had a conversation with, about this with Dr. O'Connor. There are two medicines. He's on Eliquis and Crestor, cholesterol-lowering medicine, and a blood thinner for his atrial fibrillation, both of which need to be stopped when you take Paxlovid. It's a very uh, standard, common thing that we do when we give people Paxlovid. Um, and you don't need to do anything in those uh, circumstances. Uh, they, they both get stopped for the five days that he's on uh, Paxlovid, and then they get restarted, and it's totally fine and pretty normal practice. Okay. Where exactly was the person infected? Where was he infected? I, I don't think we know. Um, I certainly don't know if you, if you have any thoughts I, on I, it. Look, I, I don't think that that matters, right? I think what matters is we prepared for this moment. I think what matters uh, is what Dr. Jha just laid out. Uh, if we look at where we were, were a year and a half ago, this is a president, when he walked in, one of his first priorities was to make sure we had a comprehensive plan to get people vaccinated. And so now today, look, look to today, more and more people are getting closer to having a more normal life. Uh, vaccines are available. And as Dr. Jha said, if you have not gotten vaccinated, please do. If you have not, if you're, if you have not gotten boosted, please do. Uh, these are, uh, these are treatments that are going to keep you safe. And I think that's what matters here is making sure that we continue to do the work. And the good thing is that uh, the president, again, has been uh, uh, vaccinated and double boosted. We know that rebound COVID cases have been a concern in some individuals who take Paxlovid. Uh, are there any precautions you can take to try and prevent that? And how concerned are you that that could potentially uh, hinder his return to the office? It's a great question. Um, so let me tell you what we know about rebound. Um, so we've looked at the clinical data on this because if, if, you, if you look at Twitter, things, it feels like everybody has rebound. But it turns out there's actually clinical data if you look at major health systems that have given out packs of it to tens of thousands of people. Rebound rates are around 5%. There are some studies that says maybe 7 8%, some that say it's 2%, but it's in the single digits. So it happens, it's not that frequent. But here's the key point about rebound, which is when people have rebound, they don't end up in the hospital, they don't end up particularly sick. And the goal of Paxlovid is to keep people from getting seriously ill. And so it continues to work. 
Um, you know, his physician is in charge of taking care of him. Obviously, the president will continue to be monitored as he is. Um, but the Paxlovid is working really well at preventing serious illness, rebound or no rebound. And that's uh, why he was uh, offered it, and that's why the president took it. And you mentioned the, the symptoms that the president has had so far, runny nose, fatigue, dry cough. What other symptoms are you looking out for at this point? Obviously, this is the beginning of this. And what would warrant hospitalization? So right now, he feels really well. Our expectation is that he's going to continue to, to have mild illness. Um, and he's going to be monitored for his symptoms. I mean, you ask him, you know, kind of every day. I asked him, like, how is he feeling? Is he having any other symptoms? He's not. And I think we're going to continue monitoring that. And, and, uh, and I don't, like, I think that that is the plan right now, is that he's going to get care uh, the way he would, um, I mean, I was going to say the way he would any other person. He's the president, so obviously uh, he gets uh, extra attention. But um, I, I don't think we have any uh, expectations of any other symptoms at this point. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna go to the back. Go ahead, go ahead, April. Um, I'm come back. I wanna follow up on that on a couple questions. Oh. So if the president's if the president's oxygen level went down, would he be uh, a candidate to go to the hospital? I don't so at this point we don't I generally want to avoid hypotheticals. He is breathing well, his oxygen level is normal, uh, and he's you know, I was gonna say resting comfortably, he's actually not resting comfortably, he's working comfortably uh, in his residence. But that's not a hypothetical in COVID, um, sir. Uh, and the next question, um, in this moment we understand that the incubation of COVID is two to 14 days. Has the White House reached out to those the president has been in contact with, personal in-person contact with, in that period of time? So CDC has very clear protocols on this um, in terms of when people are contagious pre-symptoms. Uh, the White House Medical Unit is conducting right now a, um, a, co a contact tracing, and they are contacting every single person who meets the CDC definition of a potentially close contact. And speaking of the CDC, this last question. The CDC says if you are in a high-risk area, and a, a, a large swath of the nation is in a high-risk area, they recommend wearing masks indoors. In this White House, we're still seeing people back and forth. D.C. is a high, is, is, is in that high category. Is there now a push to tell people to start wearing the masks indoors, especially as the president now we see has COVID? I, I actually, off the top of my head, can't remember where D.C. is on the, on the, um, on the uh, orange, yellow, green map. Uh, so I, I, I'm not going to kind of do this off. But the bottom line is we follow CDC guidelines. And the policy at the White House is to follow CDC guidelines uh, in terms of mask wearing uh, based on based on CDC's COVID community levels. Go ahead, Thank you. Um, will the president resume public events in five days if he tests negative, or will the White House be more cautious and have him isolate for 10 days? So the plan right now is to follow. It's actually we do CDC guidelines, but we actually go beyond CDC guidelines. So uh, he's certainly going to isolate for at least five days and he will return to normal activities after he's had a negative test. And, and I'm also curious, what precautions, we saw that video the president put out, what precautions did you take for the person who filmed the video? Yeah, I just want to touch on a couple of things. Um, so, look, right now we saw, we heard from the doctor, Dr. O'Connor, his personal doctor, and he has mild symptoms, and he's continuing to, uh, uh, to continue to do the, the work of the presidency um, from his residence, and I think that's important. Um, and, you know, and to your question, April, every, every person uh, 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 reacts to COVID differently. So it is a, it is a hypothetical, right? We have, we're going to keep an eye. Uh, the doctor is going to keep an eye on him. Uh, I think what's important, though, and I really want to take this opportunity to say this, and Dr. Jha said this as well, is that he is vaccinated and he is double boosted, which gives him uh, protection, right? Which makes, which makes it, uh, uh, puts him in a good position, just like every other American that he fought so very hard for to make sure that we had a comprehensive uh, uh, COVID plan to get people vaccinated, boosted, and also Paxlovid, right? And so what's what we need to know is he has mild symptoms uh, and uh, and he is going to continue to do his work. Uh, as we've seen from the video, Ashley, I'm going to take your question right now. Uh, look, in the in the video that you saw, uh, there was a, a vid his video videographer was there with him, wore an N95 mask, had the appropriate distance, the six foot, the six feet distance in the same same situation as well with the with the photo. Um, and as you saw in the video, he was outside. So we did that outside uh, and with the photo, 
he took off his mask so that we can, so that the American people could see him and see directly, uh, you know, see the work that he's doing and that he's sitting at his deck, desk continuing to do his work. But just wanted to give that. Go ahead, go ahead. Can I, can I ask whether there was any consideration given to other treatments other than Paxlovid, such as the monoclonal? It's, it's been unclear how the two work together. <laughs> it's more serious cases that get a monoclonal. Can you walk through that? Um, I think there are two good choices for therapies. One or the other. I think there are two good choices. There are people who get both. I think this was a decision made by Dr. O'Connor in consultation with uh, certainly the president, the patient. Um, and uh, I also know that Dr. O'Connor spoke with infectious disease experts at Walter Reed and at George Washington University. Uh, that was all part of the plan, by the way. We'd always sort of planned that if the president got infected, uh, we would consult with experts. He did, and based on that, that was a recommendation that uh, Dr. O'Connor made, uh, and the president accepted that recommendation. Would that be an option if the case were to worsen? If someone who gets Paxlovid, things go get worse, do they get, can they get a secondary? You know, in terms of his clinical care, first of all, Dr. Connor is going to drive that process with consultation from uh, experts, not just at those institutions, really around the country. Uh, and I think uh, he's going to make decisions based on what is happening with the president in his condition. Right now, the president's feeling well. Uh, he described it as himself as feeling fine with mild symptoms. And yep. uh, we've seen with rebound cases, second courses of Paxlovid. Would the president, if he had a rebound case, in other words, test a positive after testing negative, get a second course of Paxlovid? A um, lot of hypotheticals there of lots of things that might happen down the road. Well, I understand. Right no, it is, but it's hypo hypothetical. The president feels fine right now. I, I don't think, uh, you know, I, th I think we will cross that bridge if that happens, but at this point, really focus on just making sure the president continues and, to do yeah, it. And, and, I, and I'm sorry, just very, very quickly, you, just to clear the timeline, he <coughs> popped on a, on a routine screening test and then spoke to doctors about his symptoms as opposed to saying, hey, I have symptoms, let's do a test. That's the order of things. He was scheduled to get his test this morning. He came back, it came back positive. Uh, and on questioning, as I understand it from Dr. Connor, on questioning, reported that, yes, he was having these mild symptoms. Thank you. And, and just to add, you guys saw him yesterday. He was in uh, in Massachusetts, Somerset. He spoke for 20 minutes in 93 degree weather. It was incredibly hot. He was he was feeling uh, fine, you know. Where most of us were looking for water and trying not to pass out, the president was delivering uh, remarks on a very important issue on climate change, as you all saw. I do want to add just that. Um, uh, that, uh, as we've stated, Dr. O'Connor, you, uh, you all will hear, uh, d get daily up updates from Dr. O'Connor and how he's doing. So I just wanted to add that, and we'll just continue uh, to call. Okay. A couple simple questions, if I can. First of all, was the president ever identified as a close contact to anybody else in the course of the last 72 to 100 hours, say? Not that I know of. Do you? Well, I'll say I'll say this: uh, the the process is we are st we are starting our process that we are protocol process on close contact. Uh, Was he ever identified as a close contact to somebody else, though? Oh, to someone else. Uh, that part I, I I I we would have to find out. I can't speak to. What I can say is our process, because as we as we all stated, he is now uh, positive. We are doing our process to for our close contact. Uh, so components. That many people have been identified as close contacts to him without just, detailing the specifics. We are just starting our process, so we, I don't. To this point, how many have been? I, I'm just saying we're just starting our process. I don't have a number to read out to you. I told you that he called the the, the members, the congressional members that traveled with him uh, yesterday, uh, but I, we're just starting out our process right Has now. Has anyone else at the White House tested positive this week? Well, as we have, as we normally do, if they are uh, if they are a close contact to the president. Uh, we we normally provide that information. I when I tested positive and I was a close contact to well out of abundance of a caution actually I was not, um, but because I had traveled with him we share that information. But we have a protocol here that we will continue to to to, uh, uh, to follow when it comes to uh, who's a close contact to the president and making sure that we make that clear. And in December of last year when he when uh, when there was a uh, um, when he was traveling and there was someone who was a close contact to him. Uh, we share that as well. So we've been transparent but, on but that. In simple terms, is anybody else in the West Wing or at the White House positive now? Uh, right now, all I can tell you, if they are, our protocol is, if they are a close contact with any of the principals, we share that information. You can't say beyond that. Let me ask Dr. Zhao one final question, if I can. We saw the president's video, and I understand the desire of the White House to show the president six feet away, the individual shooting it was wearing a mask. But for regular Americans who are watching this right now, what would your recommendation be? Should Americans who are positive for COVID, if they are in public or in any place at any time, always wear a mask? 
Um, so the, the CDC guidance on this is clear. People should isolate and uh, and they should be, they should if they're gonna be in close contact with anybody else, they should definitely be wearing a mask. Um, the president was more than six feet away from the from the camera person who was wearing an N95. Again, in that video, you saw that it was outside. So I think it was, from a safety point of view, very safe uh, thing to do. Thank you, Dr. I can ask the last question, I'm Dr. Zhang. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call on everybody. I'm going to call on everybody. I, I promise. I'm going to call on everybody. Go ahead. Thanks, Green. Um, can you explain the testing cadence and the rationale behind it? You know, given the rise of BA5 and the fact that the president's been traveling and having big events, why doesn't he get a daily test? So the testing cadence is determined by Dr. O'Connor, um, his personal physician. He gets tested very regularly. Um, I don't r really think there's a huge advantage of testing like every day. I think- so Had he tested yesterday morning, for example, he might have tested positive in time to not go to that trip and expose any number of people, right? The president, like, uh, he, the protocol behind the president's testing uh, has been both developed by Dr. O'Connor, but I think also has gone through a lot of vetting. It's, uh, uh, it's what we use to, to protect the president and, and those around him. And uh, it's been, I, I don't have anything else to say beyond the no, kind of the protocol look, we have. Look, uh, like Dr. Jha said, it is between, it is between him and his, his uh, personal doctor uh, on that protocol. He has a regular cadence as we have uh, spoken about before. We shared with all of you on Tuesday that he tested negative. Um, and the reason why he, you saw him yesterday, I just said. He was speaking in front of many of your colleagues uh, outside for 20 minutes in a, on a very, very hot day. Uh, and it wasn't until later, it, later uh, in the day, in the evening, uh, that he was feeling a little tired and he, he was tested today. Uh, look, this goes back to where we have come from where we started. Uh, we have, the president has done the work to make sure that more than 200 million people in this country uh, have been vaccinated. More than 100 million people in this country have been boosted. That's because we have a comprehensive plan to make sure people get vaccinated so that they can be protected. And so that is what's most important here. He has mild symptoms, he continues to work, uh, and, uh, and like many Americans, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we send out message uh, to make sure to get, get vaccinated and boosted if you have it. Yet. Does the president, does the White House, are there any regrets about the amount of time in sort of recent days and past weeks that we've seen him unmasked, shaking hands with people, hugging people, fist bumping, in close contact with crowds? In retrospect, was he too casual? No. I mean, look, I, I, when I look at this is, I've said this before from this podium, we have an incredibly contagious variant, um, and we've had a protocol that I think has done a very good job of protecting the president. The most important part of that protocol, by the way, is making sure that he was up to date on his vaccines and we had access to treatments. Um, the president wants to get out there and, and be with and meet American people uh, and engage, and uh, and we always said that this was a possibility. I think I even said it from this stage that this was a possibility. Um, and uh, I think that that the protocols have have kept him from getting infected. And and but we knew that this was a possibility with this incredibly contagious variant. The good news is, and and this was always the point. The good news is. He is, his immune system is very well protected given the, the four vaccine shots he's gotten. He's getting treatment. Uh, he has mild symptoms. Uh, he's feeling fine, his words. Go ahead, Jeff. Dr. Shaw, if I could uh, please ask you about the president's age. He's 79 years old. What level of concerns does that add uh, when someone like him tests positive? Um, very simply, uh, I would begin with what's his immune status and what and, the, and what are his access to treatments. And the bottom line is, given how much immunity he has from vaccines, given that he was started on treatments right away, like literally at symptoms this morning, got started on Paxlovid this morning, um, I think his, all of those things very dramatically reduce his risk of serious illness. And that's really the goal here, is to, is to prevent serious illness, to keep that risk as low as possible. Um, I think he's gotten that full set of protections. And in terms of monitoring his oxygen, is that something that will be done hourly, something that will be done a couple times a day? Just walk us through if you could, uh, the oxygen levels and the concern that could raise. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know how often. What I will say is that he's, he's uh, 
monitored very regularly. He's feeling well. Uh, his oxygen level was checked this morning. It was normal. Um, and the, the exact sort of frequency of that is a decision between him and his physician and, and really Dr. O'Connor making that call. You said it doesn't matter where he got it, but how can it not matter where he got it if that is something that of course is involved in contact tracing, this administration has taken it very seriously, how can it not matter? I think where what, he I, got what, it? I, what I was trying to say is what's important now is that he has mild symptoms. Uh, is that he is working from from the residents on, on behalf of the American people. That's our focus. Look, we knew this was going to happen. As Dr. Jha said, uh, you know, when he was when he joined me at the briefing uh, in the briefing room uh, not too long ago, he said, "This is this is uh, you know, everyone was at some point everyone's going to get COVID. What is important is to make sure that you have you get the treatment uh, that is that we have provided for folks. Uh, whether it's uh, get, make sure you get vaccinated, make sure you get boosted, uh, and uh, and then we have Paxlovid that is made available because of this president. So what I'm trying to say is the moment that we're in right now is what matters uh, as we're talking about uh, the president uh, and and uh, and his treatment and how he's feeling uh, and how he's continuing to work on behalf of the American public. I'm going to move around because I know there's a lot of it. Olin, go ahead. Thank you. I, 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 Kareem, you said that he was feeling fine yesterday during his speech, but that he started to feel tired later on in the evening. I just want to clarify, can you say exactly when he started feeling mild symptoms? I, I cannot say uh, exactly when, when that occurred. Heard. Um, I could say that uh, uh, that um, you know he told us this morning he had a nose uh, a, no, a runny nose he had a dry cough um, he was a little bit fatigued uh, he did say he had restless sleep uh, and when that occurred uh, and he he got the antigen test tested uh, tested positive and then was given a PCR test I, I cannot pinpoint uh, the exact moment uh, and you know we were transparent. Uh, I got the letter from, uh, we put out a statement as soon as uh, we we uh, did the test and were able to uh, put out the information. So we were transparent in giving out the statement. We were transparent in sending out the letter. Uh, and uh, we will have daily updates from his doctor uh, on, uh, on his status. In terms of the search for close contacts, I understand that's underway now. But I, I, there should still be able to be some confirmation of at least some individuals who are close contact. He was with multiple members yesterday on Air Force One. Uh, he was with the First Lady of Ukraine as well on Tuesday. Um, you know, was, can you tell us if the Vice President is a close contact, if those members that were on the plane are considered close contacts? Yes. Uh, so when it comes to the Vice President, she spoke to this earlier today. She just uh, gave comments and she spoke with the, pres uh, the President. I will let her uh, speak to that. You heard from the First Lady. Of course, she's the First Lady. And so she spoke, she, spoke, uh, she said she tested negative and clearly uh, she is uh, a close contact. Look. Um, you know, uh, I'll say this. Um, our commitment since last July is to disclose when the president or one of the four principals is a close contact of staff who tested positive as defined by the CDC. This is a definition uh, by the CDC or when he tests positive, which is what we're doing to all of our review today. Uh, so, for example, we were transparent with the vice president. We were trans when she tested positive, when the second gentleman uh, tested positive, and we're being we're doing that currently right now with him. So we are transparent when the President Biden was a close contact of a staff member, as I mentioned, in December. Uh, and But for privacy reasons, uh, we will not get into more details as it relates uh, to that. Uh, so we're starting the process. Uh, I don't have a number or a list of folks to, to share with you. I think that if I know some of your colleagues traveled with us, if there are any concerns or questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're happy to, uh, if, if you have personal questions about yourself, uh, feel free to reach out. I have one more. Just Ashley asked as well, I think, about um, moving forward uh, the five-day quarantine, whether or not he would immediately resume. I believe you said that uh, he would quarantine for five days and then he would resume when he tests negative. But I just want the connective tissue here. If he tests negative on that fifth day, would he resume his schedule as normal? Yeah, so the CDC's uh, guidance on this is very clear. You have to isolate for five days. Um, CDC says that you can resume after five days without a negative test, as long as you wear a well-fitting mask. Um, we go above and beyond that at the White House, and we, uh, the president will get tested. And as long as he's isolated for five days, meeting the kind of CDC requirement, um, we will wait until he gets a negative test, negative antigen test, before he returns uh, to activity.
Go ahead, Steve. How does the White House adjust to having a president with COVID? Uh, who has access to him? Is he staying in one room, a series of rooms? What's the, the physical situation? So as I just stated, he is isolated in the, in the White House resident. Look, the president could be a president anywhere. Right? It doesn't. It doesn't matter where he's located. He has the technology. He has uh, the tools. Uh, what he needs, the communications. Uh, what he needs to continue to doing his job. And has staffing here been adjusted at all? Fewer people around. There has been no change to our protocol as as of date. As date. I, I think you just asked. Well, I got. I gotta go. I gotta go around. You're, yeah, I gotta, your, your colleagues are gonna kill me. I gotta go around. Go ahead, Tampa. We're gonna and we'll go to the back. I just want to parse the timeline a little bit. I think there may be a comma in the doctor's statement, and I just want to clarify. Um, did he start experiencing the cough last night, or all of the symptoms last night? I guess my question is, when did he start experiencing fatigue? When was the first sign of fatigue? Yeah, I mean, spoke I, to the doctor. I, I spoke to the doctor. I spoke to the president. Um, you know, my understanding is, again, the, the, his doctor spent a lot more time with him than, than I, I mean, and I haven't spent time with the president. I just spoke to him on the phone. Um, the president felt well all day yesterday. I think late in the evening, he felt some amount of fatigue. After a long day of travel, I don't know. I, there are a lot of late evenings where I feel some amount of fatigue. I don't know about all of you. Um, he went to bed. Uh, I asked him how he slept. He said he just had a bit of a restless night. And this morning got his routine tests that he does. And then when Dr. O'Connor probed him further on symptoms because he tested positive, that's when he mentioned, yeah, that maybe I was a little tired last night. So I, I really think his symptoms you could say either began late last night or early this morning. Did he have any fatigue or runny nose or anything like that on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday? He felt totally normal yeah. and said that he felt, at least to me, he said he felt totally normal all day yesterday. Has he experienced any fever or brain fog, other symptoms of COVID? He's had no, no fever. Okay. And um, could we get the president's position here so that we can not play the game of telephone? I don't think this is a game of telephone. Uh, you have Dr. Jha, who is a medical doctor himself, who runs our COVID-19 response. You're going to hear uh, regularly uh, to a statement from Dr. O'Connor. Uh, and so we are going to be as transparent uh, as, as we are going to be transparent as we have been. We put out a statement this morning. We put out a letter from Dr. O'Connor. You have both of us here taking your questions uh, and uh, answering them. You saw a picture of the president, saw a video of the president. Uh, and so we are doing this very differently and we're gonna continue uh, to provide information for, the, for all of you and also the American public. I'm gonna continue to go around, go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, in, in, while doing contact tracing, will you reach out to some of the officials the President met, met last year while traveling abroad, or is that too, you know, too, too far away? Yeah, so contact tracing for people in the last 48 hours who were uh, after he, he testified. So if somebody met with the President a week ago, they would not be considered a close so contact. You, you won't, uh, you know, search for maybe people like positive with COVID, that he or are we going like to do? Last week or are we going to go looking a week ago to see who yeah. might have given? I, that's not. I mean, no. The, the purpose of contact tracing is to make sure that anybody who might have been exposed uh, is so identified to prevent onward transmission. Thanks, Karen. Um, to follow up on Steve's question, um, I think you had said that there was no change to protocols here. Do you mean the West Wing for change of staffing protocols? I think that's that was Steve's question. Okay. I, I just don't have an update yeah. on that. How about the residents, though? Is there a reduction in staff while the president's in isolation? Well, and and we're how gonna, are operations? We're going to follow CDC guidance, right, which is uh, uh, which is for the president to isolate uh, and uh, and to make sure there is a, a you know very 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 minimal footprint because our goal is to make sure that we keep others safe. So just, there, there are limited people that oh, will be around I the mean, president. If, the yes, if anyone, to be quite honest, it, because we are going to follow CDC guidance. And, and to follow on what you had said earlier about um, we'll be getting updates from Dr. O'Connor. Um, will that be statements every That'll day be coming statements. from you? It'll be uh, daily statements. from. But, 
I, it, it could it could be from directly from him. I believe it'll be directly from him, but you will get a, a daily statement. A daily don't necessarily come here and do a briefing. We're going to give daily statements just like we provided the letter with transparency. Uh, the letter he provided to me, we made sure that you all saw, and we'll continue to make sure that you guys get an update on the president on a daily basis. Okay, go, go ahead. Um, and yeah, just, just following up on Tam's question, actually, um, about Dr. O'Connor, uh, there's, there's, there's obviously a few questions you can't answer about the timeline, about monoclonal antibody treatments, about the medications he's on. Why isn't he at the podium right now to answer No, I believe Dr. Ja spoke to the medication he's on. Uh, the monoclonal, right, that is something that, that is, right now he's on Paxlovid, right? We're going to, uh, if anything changes, we will be sure to share that. Uh, and so that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to have daily uh, da daily updates to all of you. I think this. I think the letter that the president that the president's doctor put out was pretty uh, was, was pretty clear and specific and said that he is on uh, Plax Paxlovid. And just follow up on, on isolation. That's obviously different from quarantine. Um, what does isolation mean in this White House? And what will happen to the first lady when she returns? Um, I, so isolation. Well, yeah, so just for everybody, they know isolation is when you're positive and you're isolating. Quarantine is if you've been exposed. Um, so th that's the kind of difference in terminology. Um, the isolation protocol is he's going to stay in his residence. We're going to absolutely minimize uh, the footprint. I don't, I, don't, I don't actually know what the plans are with the First Lady in terms of I'm, I'm assuming she's going to stay isolated from the President as well. Um, but uh, but, I, but that's, a, that's a good, I don't know if you have anything more on the First Lady. Um, but obviously, I think she will continue. She will stay away from the president as well. That's her decision, though. We don't try to tell the first lady what to do. I feel some trepidation talking about what the first lady so, will do. Uh, the president. So, first of all, uh, the, the first lady spoke to this directly. She's feeling fine, so just want to make sure uh, that's clear. And she's going to continue to follow uh, the CDC guidance, and she's going to continue to wear a mask. And so that's what she is going to. Uh, that's what she's going to do moving forward. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Dr. John, you said, you talked about the testing cadence that he had, but for while he has COVID, what's the testing cadence going to be? Will he be tested daily, and will those be rapid tests or PCR tests? Um, so I don't know that there's much value of a PCR test at this point, because they'll be positive for a while, right? So um, I, I don't actually know what his testing cadence is going to be. Again, CDC does not recommend any testing for the first five days. He will obviously be positive uh, for some period of time. He will get, he will stay in isolation for five days. He will definitely get tested after that um, and, and will stay in isolation until he turns, uh, until he turns negative. Uh, but any testing he has moving forward will largely be an antigen test. You said that his oxygen level was normal. Can you be more specific about what his oxygen level was mm -hmm. normal? Yeah, it, 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 he's feeling fine. His, he's breathing fine. His oxygen level was normal. Um, there were, he got a full physical exam. There were no issues or no concerns in Dr. O'Connor's assessment of him in, in terms of his physical exam. And last question, Craig, sorry. Um, CDC guidance is people who are close contact who are up to date on the vaccine, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Joe, um, are to wear a mask, a well fitting mask, for 10 days after being exposed, to possibly exposed to someone. You were on the plane with the president yesterday. Others, members of staff, weren't injured and not wearing a mask. Yeah, that's why when somebody was asking me, do we have a list of close contact, I am not considered a close contact. Uh, according to the CDC guidance, I am not considered a close contact. Dr. can you expand on that? Why she is I mean, I, I, I could expand on it myself. Yeah, sure, uh, but according to the CDC guidance, guidance, yes, I was with the president, but it was under 15 minutes. I was with him in short uh, amount of time. I was wearing my mask the whole time. Uh, so to your question, Peter, when you were asking me about that, it's not that simple. It's not that easy. There's a process that has to go through. And just because I was with the president yesterday, you all saw me with the president, that I am not considered a close contact. Go ahead, Jackie. Thanks, uh, Paxlovid has emergency use authorization for patients who are at high risk for progression to severe disease. So clinically speaking, either because of this diagnosis or his age or any underlying conditions or otherwise, is the president at high risk for progression to severe disease? So um, if you look at the EUA of, of the FDA, um, then it links to a CDC website that gives you what are the risk factors. Um, and, and age is certainly one of them. And I have made the point that I think anyone over the age of 50 um, 
is somebody who is eligible for Paxlovid, and, and obviously people under 50 if they have serious chronic disease as well, but I believe anybody over the age of 50 uh, is eligible for uh, Paxlovid. The president is above the age of 50. And then can you just confirm for us that there were no positive cases around the president in the last couple of days, um, or that he was not a close contact of anyone who was positive? I think you've answered this, but feel yeah, free. Yeah, I've already answered. I I've er no, I did. I answered it. I told you what our protocols are, and we have said. I. I told you what our protocols were, and as as we have been committed since the last July, uh, we disclose when the president or one of the one of the four principal principal is a close contact of a staff who tested positive as defined by the CDC. This is def def defined, again, by the CDC. Oh, when he tests positive, as we are doing today, and being very transparent about that. Are wait, to wait, wait that let, we didn't hear from you that that's a no? That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that we, when, when, there, is a close, when, they are, when there is a close contact uh, to, the, to the president, we actually give that information out, and we actually share uh, that, that individual who's a staff member if they have tested positive. That has been, that has actually been our, uh, our protocol since past, this past so, July, so a year. So we didn't receive anything like that, so am I to assume that there is, there, there was nothing that happened, there was no positive case where the president was a close contact? Yes, you're, you're, you're safe to assume that, because that's what we have been committed to doing since the last July, which is about a year ago. Okay, we're going to go continue. Go ahead. So the message that some people are going to take from this is that it's inevitable that everyone is going to get COVID at some point. I'm wondering if you think that's a reasonable assumption for people to make about this, and also what does it say about the state of the pandemic and how much longer this is going to be a part of our lives in this way? Yeah, so based on the CDC data, about 70 plus percent of Americans have been infected. Um, and, uh, and I have said, I think, from this podium that um, I don't believe that every American will be infected, but I think infections are obviously, uh, given how incredibly contagious the current subvariant is, the, the, that Omicron has been in general, uh, that we've seen a lot of Americans get infected. Um, at this point in the state of the pandemic, I think the other, our strategy on this has also been very, very clear. We have a two-pronged strategy. Number one is prevent serious illness, which I think is essential. And that strategy, as you've heard me articulate, is a combination of making sure people are up to date on their vaccines and getting treatments if they're eligible. And then the second part of the strategy is doing what, everything we can to keep infections down. Um, and that's recommending masking in crowded indoor spaces in high transmission areas, making sure testing is widely available, working on improvements in indoor in, uh, air quality and ventilation. Um, those are the things we're working on. And, um, and given that 70% of Americans have been infected, it's obviously a highly transmissible virus. Uh, and we are going to continue working on keeping both infections down and really working hard to make sure serious illness uh, is limited. And, and I think, by the way, that is working. I mean, if you look at how many infections there have been, but where we are right now on hospitalizations and deaths, a tiny fraction of where we've been in the past. So I think our strategy is largely working, uh, but it is a two-pronged strategy that focuses both on serious illness and infections. Thank you. Uh, I have two follow-ups, uh, one for Dr. John and one also for Ukraine. Um, the through line of this briefing has been that things are different now and that you're better prepared, obviously, because of the vaccine and then some of these drug therapies. So this might be comparing apples to oranges, but the previous president was moved from the White House to Walter Reed, and one of the explanations that was given at the time was that they had better facilities there. Are you confident in you know, all exigent circumstances that you have everything that you need here at the White House in terms of facilities to prepare for for anything that, that may come um, and protect the president's health. What I can say is the president is right now working comfortably in the White House, doing well. Um, uh, and you know, there are obviously a lot of resources available here at the White House to take care of him. Um, Walter Reed is always on standby for presidents, right? That's always an option. Um, that's true whether the president had COVID or not. Um, but right now, we feel very confident that the president's doing well. He's got very mild symptoms. Uh, he is really getting the state-of-the-art treatment, which, by the way, is available to every American. Um, and, uh, and he's doing very well in the residence under close monitoring from his physician. And then, Kareem, um, you addressed this moments ago when you, you were asked about your earlier statement that it didn't matter where he picked this up. Obviously. 
the most important thing is how the president is doing in the here and now. Yeah. But will you let us know uh, if you do figure out where the president did pick up this virus? I mean, it certainly does matter, at least for history. Well, as you know, the, the president travels, right? He, he travels a lot. He en engages with a lot of people. Uh, again, what I was trying to say and what I was wanting to be sure that we understood is, uh, again, the here and now. Like right now, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, explaining to you uh, how he's feeling, how he's doing. You've heard from him directly. Uh, we're going to continue to do that. We are going to do, uh, you know, contact tracing as far as who he was around. Um, these past 48 hours, as Dr. Jha just laid out. Um, but it is, uh, I mean, you know, it is not the easiest thing, right, to find out exactly uh, where, where someone got COVID. I do not know when I got COVID. I have no idea who I got it from. Uh, but we want to make sure that the people that he was around uh, gets, if it is indeed a close contact, uh, that they are made aware. And so that is our focus at this time. Dr. Shah, can you clarify your Hold recommendation on one to the Simon, I, I promise I'll get to you. Just give me one second. I'm jumping around, OK? Go ahead. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Um, so I just want to be clear on, on some of the timeline here. The president started developing symptoms last night. So, so did he, at that stage, then isolate in line with the CDC guidelines? Uh, so the president felt tired last night. Uh, felt tired last night. Can we be clear then from the physician's letter that these other symptoms, uh, I think Tam brought up the issue of the commas, but it, it could suggest that he had a runny nose and occasional dry cough last night. So are you saying he didn't have those symptoms? It was just purely fatigue. Uh, when I spoke to the president today and I asked him, he said he felt tired last night, went to bed, didn't have a great night of sleep. We've all had those. Um, woke up this morning, got tested, and then when was asked about symptoms, uh, reported that indeed he had this morning some runny nose and a, and a dry cough. Was he tested because of that? No, no, he was, this was part of his regular cadence of so, testing. So he, he, he had those symptoms, the, the runny nose and the cough, this but morning. didn't isolate at that stage. This it wasn't morning. until he tested positive. Yeah, I, my understanding is that the symptoms, those, those symptoms were this morning. But the CDC guidance says if you have symptoms, you should isolate at that point. It sounds like he only started isolating when he had the positive test. I, I, my understanding is that he had the, 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 the sore throat, uh, not sore throat, he did not have sore throat, uh, runny nose and dry cough uh, this morning. That's when those symptoms were identified. I think whether you can say whether he had fatigue last night or he just felt tired last night um, and he went to bed, I, I think that's pretty normal. But the, but, the, but the point is he then had these other symptoms before testing positive. Right? Or did they, did they develop at the same time as the, the positive test? Yeah, my understanding is that those symptoms developed this morning, and he had a test uh, as part of his regular testing cadence. Are you asking, like, within minutes of, like, when? Well, yeah, it's the CDC guidance yeah. says you should isolate if you have symptoms. Yeah, as soon as you became so, aware of your symptoms. So I'm asking, did he start isolating only after the positive test, and, and he had the symptoms before the positive test. It sounds like he had the positive test, was then questioned about, about any symptoms he had, and he said, oh yes, I, I, I do have these other features, which would suggest he didn't comply with the CDC guidance. I think he became aware of his symptoms of, of runny nose and sore throat this morning, thus when he developed the symptoms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but before or after the test is what I'm asking. I don't know the I don't know the exact like hour that he developed that he became aware of his symptoms. Are you asking like within minutes? Like when exactly did his symptoms? Well, that, be that would be nice, and that would be perhaps one of the reasons for having his physician up here answering all these questions. But but um, can you see the point I'm getting at? The, 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 the point is you don't isolate when you've had a positive test. You isolate. No, when I you actually have the don't. Uh, no, I actually. So no, I clearly says. Look, I, I I see what you're trying to do. Uh, but it's not the case for everyone. Um, the president went on a trip. He came home last night. He was, he felt a little tired. He felt a little restless sleep. I think most of us who traveled yesterday were probably a little tired by the end of the day. He went to sleep and he had a regular cadence, took a test, 
And when after he took the test, the doctor questioned him and said, hey, you, you know, probably asked whatever questions he asked of the president. He said, oh, yeah, by the way, I have a, a runny nose uh, and a dry throat, a runny nose and a dry throat. I mean, you know, that is, <laughs> I mean, that is not, it's not a fever. Uh, it's not a, a massive headache. It is a runny nose and a dry throat, which many people, which many people who do not have test positive for COVID have. I mean, so I think I, I think what you're what you're trying to get at, right, is is just uh, you know it is just it's a bit far reaching. And the moment that he tested positive on an antigen, he took a PCR test tested positive, and then he began to isolate. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. No, we're going to move on. We're CDC guidance, that's it. Yeah, he did. He followed CDC guidance, but you're, the, what you're trying, the connection you're trying to make is a bit far-reaching. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, you said the, the Walter Reed suite is always ready. What, what conditions would you need to see from the president to take a trip over there? What I'd say is, again, in general, I don't want to get into hypotheticals. The president's right now has very mild symptoms, he's got a mild illness, he's feeling reasonably well, his words, he's feeling fine, he's working, um, he's getting the care he needs here. Um, and my, you know, and, and so, so that's all I, I really have to say at this point. I think hypotheticals about what might happen in the future are sort of hard to, and there'll be a decision, by the way, made by Dr. O'Connor, his, his physician. All right, we're just gonna take a few more from the back. Go okay. ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Jacques, can you clarify your recommendation to the first lady? Obviously, the White House is a big place, 132 room, 35 bathroom. So the president has a big place to isolate. Is he going to, will you recommend that he isolate from the first lady? Will that be your recommendation? <laughs> like, you're just trying to get me into trouble, aren't you, in terms of? No, I think he should isolate. And, um, and that he should follow CDC guidelines. Uh, he should isolate. He is isolating. I should. He is isolating. Um, and uh, I think the first lady uh, is um, because she, you know, I think she's wearing. Uh, she's tested negative. She's been wearing a mask. I, I, I have to say, I have not engaged on the question of of. Uh, what, what happens when the First Lady returns back. I, I don't yeah. know if you have anything else. Okay. I, I have a follow-up. And, and then on masks, the President wears a mask, he's well protected, but he's still got COVID. Is this the time to really realize that masks may not really be as effective as, you know, we try to make them to be? So I think the science on masks is actually quite clear, and there is broad agreement among public health and science experts that masks work. Higher quality masks work better than lower quality masks. He wears, every time the president wears masks, he wears high quality masks. Um, masks are uh, not a panacea, uh, and obviously uh, the president uh, you know, um, engages with people, um, both indoors and outdoors, uh, and, and there was never, I think, an understanding on our part that we could keep the president from uh, having zero chance of getting infected. Like he's got very close, very strong protocols around him, but we always knew that this was a possibility. Go ahead, sir. Two, two, two questions that I think haven't been asked yet. First of all, given that the president now has tested positive for COVID, will there be a reevaluation of the protocol that will put in place at the White House to protect him from getting COVID mm -hmm. in light of his condition being in a different place. And the second question is, uh, for folks out there who may now hear from their employer, well, the President of the United States got COVID and he kept working when someone thinks they need to take a sick day because they got COVID. How, do you, how, do you, how would you answer that or how would you address that question? Well, I, I believe people, if they feel ill, should absolutely get sick time to recover. Um, the president feels well and feels capable of continuing to work. Obviously, uh, his schedule is modified, right? He's not gonna be able to make the same trips, but he's able to work uh, from home. And, but I feel very, very strongly that if people feel ill, people s feel sick, they absolutely should get uh, time to recover. That's something. So that's your second question. What was your first one? The question was the COVID protocol, oh, the, the COVID testing protocols. for being in the same room as the president and the like that were designed to, now that his risk situation has changed uh, when he recovers, yeah. uh, will there be a reevaluation of the protocols at the White House? Yeah. Right now, I'd say we're focused on, on making sure the president continues to do well. He, can, he is uh, thankfully doing well because of, of the fact that 
uh, he is vaccinated, boosted, getting treated. I don't think there's been any discussion of whether the protocols need uh, any kind of change. All right, two more, and then we're going to go. Yeah, let me, uh, thank you, Corinne. Uh, let me follow on, on Dr. O'Connor. Uh, neither of you has seen the president today. Neither of you is treating the president. Uh, the question is, when will Dr. O'Connor come out? Because to just put out a statement and shield him from questions would be the least transparency of any White House in 50 years on a presidential illness. Wow, I, I wholeheartedly disagree on your last statement. Wholeheartedly disagree on your last statement. Um, so we are doing this very differently, very differently that I would argue than the last administration. And I'm happy to have that conversation with you. Uh, number one, um, uh, we did not see the president because we are following CDC guidance. Uh, and the CDC guidance is to make sure that uh, we have minimal contact with the president and allow him to isolate uh, and allow him to, uh, you know, get his treatment to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to get better, right? He, he's having, again, uh, mild symptoms and is able to work from, from home. Uh, I think, I believe, we believe getting uh, direct information, pretty, pretty much detailed information from this letter that we, in a transparent way, shared with all of you on how he is doing. And we have committed to do that every day. I'm gonna take the last question. Uh, go ahead, Brett. Thanks, Brett. Uh, two questions. One, uh, I'm curious, Dr. Jha, uh, what is the president's age and sort of his status? Does that affect his risk for long COVID? Or what can you tell us about um, you know, the potential for long COVID and how you'll monitor that, that risk? Yeah, I'm not aware of data. Maybe it's out there. But I'm not aware of data that age is a, um, among adults. I think there's a different thing for kids. But I think among adults, I'm not aware that they're that age is a significant risk factor for long COVID. Obviously, the president um, gets excellent care from his physician, as he uh, will during the current mild illness that he is um, that he is suffering through. And if he has any persistent symptoms, that they'll they'll get a, a assessed and addressed by his physician. And then just secondly, I guess more broadly, maybe um, I was hoping you could kind of explain uh, what the risk of reinfection is with this current variant. I know there's some uncertainty about you know if you if you get the virus, you know, how long you're protected for and you're immune for. Um, I was hoping you could just speak to that and whether that's changed with the, the current variant that's spreading. That's a really good question. What we know is that if you were infected with previous versions of Omicron, BA1, let's say, from the January wave, you don't have a whole lot of protection against BA5. And that's the dominant variant that it is, that we have in the, in the U.S. right now. If you get infected with BA5, what is your level of protection against future variants? We just have no evidence and no data on that. So what I have been very clear on is people who have been previously infected in the past may not have a lot of protection against infection from BA5. We don't know if the president has had BA5. Again, he's going to get sequencing. Um, but uh, obviously, we will be data driven in, as we learn more about this. Okay. Thank you, everybody. To transfer power to Vice President Harris, if the president's situation oh, gets worse, the president is uh, has mild symptoms. He's able to do uh, the business of the American people from the residence, and that's what matters right now. So there's no plan in place then.